For this lab, random walker. We are given two .java files. We are given this drawing panel one, and we are given this test random walker one. With these, we are going to have to make a random walker class. It says here in the instructions. And then we're also going to make a main driver class that will print this out. Once we have our driver class and our random walker coded, both in .java, we can run our test random walker and our walker should random walk. So to start this, we are going to make a new Java project. We're gonna finish it, don't create, and now we're gonna go up here, SRC, new package, we'll click finish, and then we're gonna do new class, and we're going to need to make two classes. The first class we're going to make is the random walker class. So we're just going to title it random walker, and then we're going to have the public static void main checked. If we click finish, our random walker will be right here. Later in the lab instructions, it says that we need to write a main.java for testing random walker. So we're going to go into the actual package, it's the only one I have open right now. I'm going to click new, and then make a new class, and then inside of here I'm just going to call it main. It'll automatically assign it .java, we'll click public static void, and then click finish. So this is our main, and this is our random walker, both of our different classes. Now we have these files that I noted earlier, we have the test random walker, and we also have the uh, drawing panel for it. So what we're going to need to do is select both of these, click, drag it, and bring it into the package, and then we're going to place it in here and click copy to files. And then we can see that they're going to be implemented in here like this. If we click them both, we can add them in here. Now it says the package is main, so we need to change our package name, and to change the package name, we're gonna go up here, I'm going to click refactor, rename, and then I'm going to rename our package main because I named it something else initially. We'll just click continue, and now the actual package issue is fixed. We can see that we have some errors right here, and that's because we haven't coded the methods for the random walker class, which this we'll be calling. This is the test random walker.java. This is one of the files that we're given. We can see that we have an object here, random walker, walker equals new random walker. So this is making a new object of our random walker class or a new instance of it. So it's pulling from here. Same thing with our drawing panel, but the drawing panel is given to us. So we need to make this, these methods. We need to make the get x, we need to make the move, we need to get y, and we also need to make the get steps. So we're going to do all that in the random walker, then we're going to test in our main class, and then we are going to try to run our program in the drawing panel.java. Drawing panel.java is given to us, and it's this lengthy code right here, and the test random walker is also given to us, and we're going to use this as a base to write our code. In the instructions, we're given a brief um, rundown of what we're supposed to do right here. We need to keep track of our XY location. We need to start at zero, zero when it's created, and when our walker is asked to move, it will randomly move exactly one unit up left, down, or right. So randomizing is something that we're gonna to have to do here. There's only four possible moves, so we're gonna to have to limit our random to four walks. And now we can start writing our methods. So the first thing here is move. I'm gonna start out with move. We are in the random walker class right here. And for the random walker class, we don't need this main method because we're just making a class so we're not creating anything or printing anything out. So in here, we need to initialize some values. So we need to initialize our x, we need to initialize our y, and then we need to initialize the number of steps. So we're going to say int x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and then also steps is equal to 0. If you were to assign this all on one line, you need to use a comma instead of the ending semicolon so that they all get assigned correctly. So now that we have assigned these correctly, we are going to start writing the actual methods. Now the first method, like I said, we're going to be working on is move. So we're going to have a public, and this is not returning anything, so it's going to be a void, and we're going to have it as move. In our method, we are going to be moving randomly. So we need to instruct our random walker to update its coordinates by randomly making one of the four possible moves. So we have to make a new random. We're going to do random. I'm just going to call it r instead of equal to new random. We'll have our parentheses, and this creates our new random. We're gonna to have to hover over this and actually import random for it to work correctly. Once we do that, it works just like this. Now, this creates our random. However, to get it, we have to do something else, something additional. 
we're going to store our actual random number inside of something. So every time this move is called, we have a new instance of a random number, and now we have to create it. So we're going to say int random is equal to r dot next int. And what this does is it gets the next integer of our random, the next random number. But we want to limit this to only four possible moves, up, down, left, or right. So to limit our random, all we need to do is put our limiting number inside of here, four. So for this four number, it's going to go from zero, one, two, three, and not four. When we have a number in here, this basically maxes out the max random that we can get. It goes up to this number, but does not include it. So we are going to have zero, one, two, and three. If we wanted to start at zero, we would have another number that would indicate the lower bound, but we're not dealing with that right now. So inside of here, we have four conditions. We are going to have if, and if our random is equal to four, we are going to be in here. And if our random is equal to four, um, we don't need to be extremely specific on where we move because as long as it moves for one of these different things, it's okay. But we'll say if random is equal to, actually, it can't be four because it goes from zero to three. We'll say three. If random is equal to three, we're gonna increment or decrement our x value or our y value. Again, it doesn't really matter. I'll just increment our x right here. So we're gonna have x plus plus, and this will move it to the right. Otherwise, we'll have an else if statement, and we'll say random is equal to two. And if our random is equal to two, we'll just say x minus minus, and this will move our random walker to the left. Then we're gonna say else if, and then random is equal to one, and if our random is equal to one, we'll just do y plus plus, and that will move us up. Lastly, we're going to have else if, and we can just have an else here. I like to specifically state what I'm doing though. So we're gonna have else if random is equal to zero. We're gonna have y minus minus, and this is going to move us down. So that should be it for the actual statement part. Now we need to keep track of how many times we move. It says somewhere in the instructions, but we need to have a counter every single time we move. So every time we go through this method, it's only going to hit one of these statements, and every time it hits one of these statements, it then needs a counter. So we're going to use these steps right here, and just say steps plus plus, and that's going to increment our step every single time. It's important to make all of our programs Java doc compatible, so we're going to make our Java doc while we do this. We're going to have a dash star star, and then press enter, and we can move this over our actual method and bring it down one here. And we need to state what this method is doing. I have public void move instructs our random walker to update its coordinates by randomly making one of the four possible moves that is up, down, left, or right. And then if we had parameters or a return, we would also include it inside of here. But since we don't, we don't need to. Now we're gonna go into the next method, which is the get x right here. This returns the random walker's x coordinate. So after we've gone through this part right here, we've assigned some x to a random walker, or we haven't, and it's still zero. And if we look at our test random walker, it needs to be called get x. So we'll go back in here and do public int get x, and then we are going to just have our method like this. It's an int because we are going to actually be returning type int. And we have an error right here because we do not currently have a return statement, but we'll deal with that in a second because what we will be returning is just x. So we are returning x if they are asking for x. Now we're gonna go up here, we're gonna do the slash, two dots, and then we see that the Java doc is ready for us to write out. We're gonna say that our public int get x returns the random walker's current x coordinate. Our return is going to be x. And so that is our method. For the next one, we're gonna have something very similar, except it's just going to be get y. So what I'm just going to do is copy and paste this down here, and I'm going to change some of these to get y. I'm gonna change this to y, and then this to y. And then in here, we're just going to return y and change this to get y. And so that should fix some of the issues inside of here, and it does. Now we can see that we need one more method, that is get steps. So we're gonna go into a random walker class, and we are going to create the method inside of our class. We're to return the number of steps our random walker has taken. So it's, it's going to be kind of similar to these uh, previous methods. We are returning something. So it's going to be a public int since our steps is an integer. And then we're going to call it 
whatever we need to call it, which is get steps. So we're gonna have get steps, and then we are just going to have our method just like this. So inside of get steps, all we're going to do is return the number of steps we have taken. So that is our return. We can make get java.compatible by doing this. So this should be it for our random walker class. We've implemented all of the methods and they look to be correct. Last thing we're going to do inside of here is we're going to title our Java doc. We will do a slash underneath our package and then we will do two stars and press enter. And then inside of here, we're going to do at, we're gonna have the author name and then we're gonna have at version number. And the version can just be the date that you coded the assignment or the date that it is due. So we're gonna be testing our random walker class inside of the main class. And to do this, we need to make a new instance of our random walker. So we'll be in here and we're gonna have random walker and we're gonna call it walk and we're setting this equal to new random walk. Now we want to test all of our things. So what we're going to do first is test move and test the get steps method at the same time because they're pretty good um, interchangeably. What we're going to do is we're just going to use a for loop and we're going to have a certain amount of values and then we're going to move a certain amount of times. And then we're just going to see if our steps is the same amount as the values that we passed in. So inside of our for loop, we're going to have four. We're going to have int a is equal to zero. Then we're going to have as long as a is, we'll just go less than 11. And then we're going to have a plus plus will be inside of our for loop. And if we are inside of our for loop, we are going to do walk dot, and then we can see all the classes that we've made here. We're going to do a walk dot move because we want to move. So after we've moved 11 times, we are going to go underneath here and then we're going to do sys out walk dot, and then we're going to have get steps. So this should print out the steps. If we run this, we can see that we get 11. So this passes and it works. Our method that we've used, the move method, it counts these steps the entire time. And we can see that if we were to go through this loop, we would get 11. So walk get steps is equal to 11. And if we further wanted to test this out to see if it was working, we could make a counter in here. So we would do int count is equal to zero. And then we will just do count plus plus. And then after this sys out statement, we would just print out count and if we run it, we can see that it prints out 11. So it works perfectly. I'm just gonna rewrite this to make it a little bit neater. So I've just had these sysout statements that really describe what's happening. We are testing the get steps after we use the walk.move method. And then we are proving that it works with our main counter. So that's how we are testing our get steps method. So now we are going to test our get x method. All we are going to do right here is call our get next and we're just going to print it out. So inside of our sysout.print line, we are gonna have walk dot and we are going to see that we can just click get x. And then if we run this, we are gonna have the testing and the proving. And then lastly, we are going to have testing get x method and that will give us a negative three. If we run this again, we are gonna have a two. And then if we run this again, we're gonna have a negative two and then this is going to go on randomly. It doesn't look very random, but it will be, as we can see, random. Um, it's not gonna be random every single time because there are four possible different statements that we could be going into and actually changing. That will be our get x method, and we're going to see if this actually works when we run our test random walker. So this is how we would test the get x method. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for y. So we're gonna do testing get y method, and then we're gonna change this to Y down here. And then we're gonna change this to Y right here. And that will test our method. If I run this again, we can see that we have our get Y method and it's going to be different now for at least one of them because one of them will have to change. So that is how we would test our random walker that we've made. This is our random walker.java. Also make sure that you have this author and version number in the main class or of any program that you've made. And so that is our Java docs. We will review it in a second, but this is a code. These are all of our methods in the random walker. This is our test class and the drawing panel is given to us as well as the test random walker. So now that our code is well formatted and we know that we're going to look back in a second for the Java doc to make sure it's all correct. What we can do is go into the test random walker and we can run this. This will open up a drawing panel 
and it will start random walking. And we can see that we are going to be counting the steps on the side. So we go from 10 to 80, we're at 90, 100, 110, and it looks like a random walker is only moving one step in whatever direction that it's taking. And since it's doing that, it means that our method works, our class works, and we've done this correctly. So I'm just going to let this run, and then we will come back and run it again to see that it is 100% random. Because if it's not random, then it's not a random walker, and we would then have to do it again. So we've hit 500 steps. Our random walker has stopped. I'm going to take a screenshot of it, just so we know what it looks like. And then I'm gonna close this out, and I'm going to run it again. If I bring this down here, we can see if it changes our directions whatsoever to see if it's actually random. Just doing a side-by-side -side comparison, it looks like they are random. So we don't need to continue this test any further. They both look good. Our drawing panel is done and we don't need the picture that we took anymore. So we can close this out and it will go all the way to 500 steps. And it looks like our methods work. So all that's left to do is look over the instructions, make sure everything is done, and now we are going to print out our Java doc. I'm going to full screen this since we are done with the instructions. And for our Java doc, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here, we're going to click project, and then we're going to click generate Java doc. We have our Java project selected. We are then going to click finish. Also make sure that the save destination is correct. Mine's is okay. We're going to click finish. We're going to do yes to all. And we can see that we do have an error and that's not acceptable. But what we can do is click this little link and it will take us to the error. And it seems that we need a description and it seems like we need a description above our actual random walker class. If I pull this out even more, we can see that it tells us we have a warning, no comment for our class. So we're going to need to make a comment here. And it looks like the comment was just supposed to be this up here, the actual author and version number. So what I'm going to do is just put it down here and then I'm going to do the same thing for the main because we're going to do it here. It looks like it's already good for the main so it was only the random walker that needed to change and the reason why I needed to change because it's under, it's supposed to be under the import level. We can go back up here, go to generate Java doc again, click finish and we can see that it has loaded successfully. We have no errors and it's generated all of our docs. If we go into the file that it's stored at, mine is Eclipse Workspace and the users of Windows, we can go and find our project. Ours is CC20 Lab 4 Random Walk. We'll click this. We'll click Doc, and this is where the Java doc is going to be stored. Once in here, we're going to click Main, and we can see that we have the Random Walker Java doc implementation. What I'm going to do is move this file over here. I'm going to click this and I'm actually going to bring this in here. That way we can access it. I'll click copy to files, and we can see that we have a doc folder that appears. And if I click this, our random walker.html has appeared, and we can see all of the different methods. We can see their descriptions, and we can see their returns. So this is very important to include inside of your actual programs, and that is for random walk. So that is how we would code this. This is our main file. If we wanted to create a Java doc for the main file, we would just do so as we did with the random walker file. But anyways, this is the main file. We're testing all of our values. This is the random walk file. If we run it, we can see that our little guy is walking and we have all of our steps done. This is our class for random walk and all of our things look correct. So we would be turning in this and main, I think, but we would definitely be turning in our HTML file because this is really important for our programming. And that's how you would go about coding for this lab random walk.